The whole problem with the world is that fools and fanatics are always so certain of themselves, and wiser people so full of doubts. The fundamental cause of the trouble is that in the modern world the stupid are cocksure while the intelligent are full of doubt. The time you enjoy wasting is not wasted time. Men are born ignorant, not stupid. They are made stupid by education. War does not determine who is right, only who is left. The good life is one inspired by love and guided by knowledge. Life is nothing but a competition to be the criminal rather than the victim. To fear love is to fear life, and those who fear life are already three parts dead. I would never die for my beliefs, because I might be wrong. To be without some of the things you want is an indispensable part of happiness. Three passions, simple but overwhelmingly strong, have governed my life, the longing for love, the search for knowledge, and unbearable pity for the suffering of mankind. The only thing that will redeem mankind is cooperation. Science is what you know, philosophy is what you don't know. One of the symptoms of an approaching nervous breakdown is the belief that one's work is terribly important. The world is full of magical things, patiently waiting for our wits to grow sharper. Most people would sooner die than think, in fact, they do so. Patriots always talk of dying for their country, and never of killing for their country. Much that passes as idealism is disguised hatred or disguised love of power. The secret to happiness is to face the fact that the world is horrible. Mathematics may be defined as the subject in which we never know what we are talking about, nor whether what we are saying is true. Fear is the main source of superstition, and one of the main sources of cruelty. To conquer fear is the beginning of wisdom. Of all forms of caution, caution in love is perhaps the most fatal to true happiness. Collective fear stimulates herd instinct and tends to produce ferocity toward those who are not regarded as members of the herd. Extreme hopes are born from extreme misery. There is much pleasure to be gained from useless knowledge. To conquer fear is the beginning of wisdom. Patriotism is the willingness to kill and be killed for trivial reasons. A life without adventure is likely to be unsatisfying.
but a life in which adventure is allowed to take whatever form it will is sure to be short. A happy life must be to a great extent a quiet life, for it is only in an atmosphere of quiet that true joy dare live. The fact that an opinion has been widely held is no evidence whatever that it is not utterly absurd. I think we ought always to entertain our opinions with some measure of doubt. I shouldn't wish people dogmatically to believe any philosophy, not even mine. If there were in the world today any large number of people who desired their own happiness more than they desired the unhappiness of others, we could have a paradise in a few years. In all affairs it's a healthy thing now and then to hang a question mark on the things you have long taken for granted. Neither a man nor a crowd nor a nation can be trusted to act humanely or to think sanely under the influence of a great fear. Democracy is the process by which people choose the man who'll get the blame. Religion is something left over from the infancy of our intelligence. It will fade away as we adopt reason and science as our guidelines. Advocates of capitalism are very apt to appeal to the sacred principles of liberty, which are embodied in one maxim, the fortunate must not be restrained in the exercise of tyranny over the unfortunate. The infliction of cruelty with a good conscience is a delight to moralists. That is why they invented hell. Those who have never known the deep intimacy and the intense companionship of mutual love have missed the best thing that life has to give. It is preoccupation with possessions, more than anything else, that prevents us from living freely and nobly. The degree of one's emotions varies inversely with one's knowledge of the facts. It has been said that man is a rational animal. All my life I have been searching for evidence which could support this. The secret of happiness is this, let your interests be as wide as possible and let your reactions to the things and persons that interest you be as far as possible friendly rather than hostile. Do not fear to be eccentric in opinion, for every opinion now accepted was once eccentric. The megalomaniac differs from the narcissist by the fact that he wishes to be powerful rather than charming, and seeks to be feared rather than loved. To this type belong many lunatics and most of the great men of history. Aristotle could have avoided the mistake of thinking that women have fewer teeth than men, by the simple device of asking Mrs. Aristotle to keep her mouth open while he counted. Those who forget good and evil and seek only to know the facts are more likely to achieve good than those who view the world through the distorting medium of their own desires. Men who are unhappy, like men who sleep badly, are always proud of the fact.
Love is something far more than desire for sexual intercourse. It is the principal means of escape from the loneliness which afflicts most men and women throughout the greater part of their lives. Man is a credulous animal and must believe something. In the absence of good grounds for belief, he will be satisfied with bad ones. The universe may have a purpose, but nothing we know suggests that, if so, this purpose has any similarity to ours. Dogmatism and skepticism are both, in a sense, absolute philosophies, one is certain of knowing, the other of not knowing. What philosophy should dissipate is certainty, whether of knowledge or ignorance. Work is of two kinds. First, altering the position of matter at or near the Earth's surface relative to other matter. Second, telling other people to do so. One should respect public opinion insofar as is necessary to avoid starvation and keep out of prison, but anything that goes beyond this is voluntary submission to an unnecessary tyranny. To teach how to live without certainty and yet without being paralyzed by hesitation is perhaps the chief thing that philosophy, in our age, can do for those who study it. A sense of duty is useful in work but offensive in personal relations. People wish to be liked, not to be endured with patient resignation. The demand for certainty is one which is natural to man but is nevertheless an intellectual vice. The point of philosophy is to start with something so simple as not to seem worth stating, and to end with something so paradoxical that no one will believe it. No one gossips about other people's secret virtues.